Hello everyone, friends, family, and visitors of the Iroquois Indian Museum. My name is Dilsat Gadusa Elijah. I am a wolf clan and I am a member of the Okazasne Mohawk Nation. I would like to send a thank you out to the Iroquois Indian Museum for providing me this opportunity and space to share a little bit of my history and the creative process that I have in my art, such as um, beadwork, sewing, and the other things that I do. <laughs> um, I will talk a little bit about myself and how I began and my business that I um, currently have. I don't have any live demonstrations, um, but I will share pictures with you that I do have of my past work. Um, and as I talk, I will sh um, show a picture and um, share the story of it and how it became. Um, the only thing that I do have is um, moccasins that, I, that I'll, I'll show you also in the end. Um, so this is my first time and I am quite nervous. So please bear with me. I might stumble and um, I have rocks that I'm rubbing. So if they fly out of my hand, don't get scared. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I was actually asked by the Airquai Indian Museum to do a live demonstration um, of my work at their, their event that they were hosting this past August, but due to the the corona and the pandemic being declared, it was canceled. So we were in replace of that. We were given this opportunity to do a recording and send it in. So they will be sharing it on the page. Um. <clears throat> so hopefully, you know, it's a good video and you learned something. <laughs> um. But as I mentioned before, I am a business business um, owner and the name of my business is Shake It Needs Designs. The only place that I, I guess, um, have exposure to is through Facebook. I began um, sharing my work and my bead work through Facebook, although I've been beading and sewing since I was, um, I started when I was eight years old and, but I made it a business back in 2014 and my name Deosak Kandiso is actually came from my great grandmother and she was Oneida Wolf Clan and so my parents had taken her name and translated it to the Mohawk which came out as Deosak Kandiso and it means shaking needs so that's why I that's where I got the name of my business um and so I've been running it through my home the past uh, six years. Um, it, my mother and my grandmother supported me a lot in picking up this uh, scale. Um, I remember as, as a young girl around the age of eight when I would come back and visit my family in Akwazasne, she would she would have a box of her scrap materials and I would actually go through it and um pick out pieces and I would she would show me to sew by hand and so that's how I got started. So every time I would come out I had my own box of materials. And my mother who actually had her, her own business when I was a young girl. I remember seeing her on the floor cutting out patterns and materials, stacks of materials and bins of ribbons and whatnot. And I remember her sending up in the Oneida community at their craft fairs and selling ribbon shirts. And so I remember, I have a lot of memories of that. So <clears throat> I, was, I was fortunate to be taught this skill and so I began to learn the sew machine and or by hand and so and for beading I I I spent a lot of time um just making random things and giving them away. Um whatever I thought of I would just make and um 
I would give it away. Um, so when it came time to actually doing a business and selling my work, it was, it was, I did, didn't want to do it because I always felt like, um, like I was selling myself and I didn't, I didn't, wasn't comfortable with the whole idea, but I was just kept being encouraged by my mother, um, and my grandmother. Um, so being a uh, single mother and having young children, that was a, a good opportunity to start sharing my skill with people. So that's what kind of um, encouraged me to start it. Um, this past November, I actually was a part of um, the Passion for Fashion uh, show that was held in Messina, New York. And I actually put myself out there for the first time and put a face to my name because like I said it was I only shared it through Facebook so people didn't know who I was and so it was it was nerve-wracking but I just used eight of my designs and I shared it and which gave me um, more confidence in my work and what I do um, <clears throat> so it was a fun opportunity and and then from there i was one of um eight designers to who were planning to attend new york city and um, to kick off the fashion week so but that too was canceled but i am still um moving forward with this video which i'm still glad is still happening because it was a part of my my goals for the year um, so I go back and forth between doing my orders and sewing. I, I sew, I, I bead, I do leather work, I, I've made baskets, I've done quill work, I've did woodwork, I do wood burning, applicane, like anything that I can um, do, I will do. Like anything I know and feel I can do, I will do it. Um, so that's a lot of my work. Um, so let me put my wax down. But like I said, I have pictures here of my past work and I can explain a little bit of each one and the process that I, that I use. Um, I work mostly off custom orders for people who want ribbon shirts or graduation outfits or smoke dance competition outfits. Um, that's what I mostly do. I don't have anything that's in stock um, because during when I'm not doing my work, I am a student. I've been in school for the past couple of years and um, in 2017, I had graduated with uh, my police foundations diploma and this year I had done my finished my mental health and addictions worker diploma. So I do... Um, and M further in my education. <clears throat> but in during that time when I'm not in school, I'm I'm doing my business. So it's hard, but I, I enjoy it. Um <clears throat> so I have one picture here that I uh, men's outfit that I had done. And this is for his wedding back in 2017. And it wasn't it wasn't planned out as as when I work on an item that the designs change and so whatever I visualize and see as I'm working on it that's what I go along with um so this is a really awesome I loved working on this because of the colors and whatnot and it was different and this was the men's yoke this is his beach cloths and his cuffs and the side drops and this was the back of his yoke here. And this was the front of his. Can't really see the back bridge cross, but once in a while I see this when he's wearing it at harvest, and it just I I can't believe that I had made it <laughs> and that anyone would actually wanna wear my stuff, but it, it was definitely a beautiful piece. This one here. <clears throat> I also do wampum strings and I was trying to replicate the condolence strings. I still have it, um, 
and I it was the first time and I was reading up on it and researching it and learning about the strings and I plan on um, making a display for it which is still a work in progress this one here is a women's outfit the skirt and the I use the velveteen. I, I that's what I work with usually or a light canvas with the beads and I did the ribbon on it and I tacked down the flowers. So this yoke here, what I liked about it was that the yoke is reversible. It it shows the front and the back and the cuffs. And that's what I that's what I like about doing yokes because I have the the choice and the space to to do two different designs and that way they can wear it um, any way that they want. This was done in 2017. Um, and I have ribbon shirts. This is my son's hair. It was made of satin. I just, one of those, I'm going to make you a ribbon shirt and see what I come up with. And that was what I ended up turning out to be. But it is applique on here. Designs are applique. Um, this one here was made for um, a medicine man slash spirit guide, I guess, spiritual helper. He <clears throat> he had seen my work in the past and he just loved it. And he asked me to come up with a design. And it's weird because I actually dreamt of this design. I didn't even know the man and I had never met him. And I, I dreamt of it. So when he had reached out, to me I, I told him yes immediately and he loved it <clears throat> this was just this was, this was his own material that he had made you know it was given to him by a, a other woman that who he was helping and it's supposed it's supposed to be the mountains the sun there's another women's yoke in cuffs it's reversible it can turn around or switch around not turn around switch around um Another woman's girl's outfit, smoke dad's outfit. There's the purse, yoke, skirt and leggings. Um, <clears throat> and this is myself here, and this was at the fashion show. And like I mentioned previously, that they had worn designs of my past work, and this skirt here was my own personal design and I had a lot of people messaging me about it wanting it but I, I there's just certain items that I just I don't do over again so I try real hard to to not replicate designs and once it's yours it's yours and that's it um so it's kind of hard when people say well I want that and I and I don't like saying no but I, I do explain to them that I don't do replica designs this here is another um, applique. I just one of, again another one of those um, ideas that I had, and I tried it. And this was my son's fifth grade ribbon shirt, and it's an um, applique all on the front of his ribbon shirt there. And this here is um, my daughter and a group of young girls that I was showing how to showing them how to make outfits and I was started with uh, cutting out their yokes and so this is my daughter's job she wanted to make a yoke for her doll but these are young girls that I was teaching in my home and another one a ganyange I had um, attended there and helped them with learning how to make their own outfits this is my son who was beading him and my nephews were after harvest ceremony, said they wanted to bead, so I showed them how to bead a little bit. Um, this is an, a, <clears throat> a yoke that I just I, I love this yoke. I didn't I didn't want to give it away or sell it, but this was an order for a, a lady, and it just it just I can't even describe it. I just how pretty it is beautiful it is it's simple but it was just awesome awesome design 
Um, this here is quill work that I had done at a workshop. It was a necklace and all this here was a cut up pieces of quill. I made it all the way around and it hung. That's done on birch bark and it has sweet grass. So stuff like this I, I like doing. Like I I haven't done another piece like this and I find that I, I just do it once and and that's it. And I don't I mean it's beautiful but I just I don't gravitate as much to it as some people might who do quill work. Um and these are my children and all the outfits in here I had made. I had made my daughter's Actually, this was a skirt and leggings that I had did Iroquois style, all white beadwork on, on blue velveteen. And I made this about uh, maybe 20 years ago. So my daughter's now wearing it. So it stays in the family. And so when I make outfits like these for my kids, I try to make it so that other children in my family will be able to wear it. So the yoke I had made, it's all leather. Made that by hand the night before. Midwinter ceremonies, last minute. <laughs> um, this is another style that I have, men's yoke, and I beaded the cuffs. This is what I actually originally um started out doing was men's ribbon shirts. It just seemed like to be the easiest thing. And these two were my probably one of my favorites. Two of them. This was for a lady who had graduated university in Washington. And this was a really different design that I... She explained to me a little bit of what she wanted, and this is what I come up with. And this, too, had a reversible yoke. A different design on the back and the belt. This one here was worn by, um, I think it was Tuscarora State Fair Princess back in 2015. So it was quite honored to have been to have made this for her um and this is men's men's um beach cloth and pants i don't make too many of them but i um i like working on them when i can <clears throat> and these are two new two new ones i had just finally had done up i had no idea how to do them like i said i just I get bored and I just have this idea and I so I do it and so I sat up one night and I start stringing up the loom and this is the first one that I had made and it's made from the glass wampums and it's just tied at the bottom and it goes right around it was actually tied at the back with leather and this one here the leather was actually went right around so I had to spend a little bit more time on this one to do but I do look forward to making them again. Um, they're really beautiful and I had a lot of people inquiring about them, wanting to place orders. This is myself <clears throat> at one of my graduations and I had made the skirt, the leggings, again, our cross style. This one was actually beaded by someone else, but I had made the design and she just beaded it. I made the moccasins and I did the piece here in the front for the yoke um, so here are some replica wampum belts that I had done about 15 years ago this was real size it was using the, the wampum that were like macaroni looking wampum this was 33, 35 beads across, I think. Um, it was a really huge belt. I made 12 of them. Um, another ribbon shirt, more ribbon shirts that I have. I do a lot of ribbon shirts. Um, this one here was a patch, patchwork that I want to try out. Uh, again, it's my first and only one that I've done so far. I have not finished it. Um, so I know that I might have rushed through a lot of these designs, but, um, there's just so much that I have. And if you ever want to go on my Facebook, I also do have Instagram. These are the condolence strings that I had, I had done. 
Which I um I also like taking pictures. So I was trying to make a video about um Hiawatha and I would still like to finish that video someday. <laughs> this is another one. I did in the shadow box um picture frames the first time. And this one here. Um but I do have uh, Facebook, Instagram, and it is under, both are under Shaken Reads, and I have a lot of my work on there posted over the past couple of years. Um, some work I choose not to share because it's, um, I guess it's more personal to individuals and the designs. Um, a lot of the times when I do my work, I, I will visualize it. And it's like, it's like, um, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And the design will come out the way it's going to come out. And that's why I say I don't like doing replicas of, um, my work because it's their design. And so it's theirs. Um, but I like it because I could be anywhere and I could just, this, this design will come across my mind and it stays in, it stays in my head until somebody comes to me and says this is what I want and so certain designs will pop back up and then that's when I make it um like this one here I remember sitting uh, sitting on a couch and it, this this whole medallion had just come across like real slow just come across my eyes and it felt like my eyes were closed so I'm like oh I gotta make that I gotta make that and and I made it and I ended up um, selling it. A lady did purchase it and it's just one of those one of a kind. Like I have not done another one since. Um, so that's how my work goes. And so I spend a lot of time just looking for the time and energy to, to create what's in my mind. <clears throat> and being the mother and the caretaker, sole provider and whatnot, I... I not given a lot of time to really create what I want to create <clears throat> and but that's that's a little bit of myself and what Shaken Reads is and this one here I would like to share too <clears throat> I was actually asked by a guy to make this for him which was different and I always wanted to do this kilt and I really liked it and I wish I had more time to work on it um but yeah, I see it around at the smoke dance. I'm smoke dancing in it. And this one here was, uh, went on a hat. It was a hat band. Um, so I hope that, I don't know, what I what I had said was significant and, and, and um, maybe inspires you to make something. Oh, but in the beginning, I had mentioned I had was making moccasins, and this here was the puckered toe, and it was the first time. Like again, I I find I do a lot of first time things, so just trying it out, like one of those like I'm bored, I have the time. So it's the first time that I'm doing this, and hopefully they come out, and I can finish them and share them on my page. But if there's anything that interested you or that you like or may want to order one day um you know feel free to message me on instagram or my facebook page and um we'll see what we you know what we can come up with i'm always willing to um listen to what you know your ideas and and help you make that um come alive <laughs> So, um, you don't go off for listening to me and taking the time out of your day to watch this video. All right, Anna.